going to get started here. Thanks everyone for joining us here today. Uh, our session is titled, Are You in Charge of Your Network or Is Your Network in Charge of You? My name is Alan Percy. I'm a Senior Director of Marketing for Audio Codes, and uh, we're a key contributor towards uh, the Interactive Intelligence Solution, uh, which includes our uh, the infra networking infrastructure that uh, supports uh, CIC, CAS, and of course their Pure Cloud platform with our Media Gateway Session Border Controllers and IP phones. We're going to talk about something a little different today uh, from what we normally do. We talk about all those bits and pieces and parts. We're going to spend a few minutes talking about network quality, voice quality, and some of the issues that happen for you folks as network managers and administrators of contact centers, helping you resolve some of the stickier problems, which is network management. Towards the end of the session, we'll also be talking a few minutes about some of the latest innovations in our session border controller family, and we'll, we'll dig into that as we get going. So just a quick show of hands here. How many of you folks here manage a contact center? How many of you folks would call yourself technical? All right, that's what I'd like to see. All the technical hands go up. All right, so let's just start out and talk about voice quality for just a minute here. One of the things, uh, we've been following some of the studies that have been happening in the marketplace, and you know, certainly SIP trunking is continuing to be uh, something of great interest. There's uh, a lot of contact centers uh, and enterprises are starting to use SIP trunking as an alternative to the legacy PSDN trunking. The, tr the transformation is occurring. A recent SIP, a SIP survey study you know, asked the question uh, what folks are doing and some 64% of the respondents to that particular survey uh, said that they were actually using SIP trunking with uh, you know, various percentages of those folks that are still in evaluation period. So I'm curious, how many of you folks here are using SIP trunking? All right, how many of you are sort of evaluating, thinking about it? How many of you have no idea what I'm talking about? Well, that's good. Just only one hand, it was one of mine. But anyway, good. So then uh, another interesting question popped up in the survey, which is if you had problems in their SIP trunking uh, solution, what were, those, what were those problems? And you can see they go all over the place, right from uh, codec mismatch, one-way audio, no audio, uh, trunks dropping intermittently, uh, registration failures, poor quality, and you can see that's a significant one, uh, SIP server failures, incoming call transfer features, and other sort of external problems that happen. And this is uh, sort of begins to start to show the sort of the sort of hidden surprise with moving to some of these SIP-based solutions is that sometimes, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily live up to what your hopes, your dreams are, but the challenge then is how do you fix it? How do you find it and how do you fix it? And that's what we're here to talk about, which is, are you managing your network? Are you in charge of the tiger? Or is the tiger in charge of you? All right? Well, the good news is, by the way, this is a professional trainer. He was not actually injured or eaten by the tiger, but uh, he, uh, he got his uh, a big face full of paw there. So networks obviously uh, have turned out to be quite complex, right? Um, I'm sure many of you probably have uh, your own data networks that are similar complexity. Uh, you know, various routers, switches, branch offices, wide area network, MPLS, you know, all those things. And what's interesting about, uh, about large networks is that, you know, they, they rarely start with a fresh start. It's almost always that a network sort of evolves. You probably inherited your network, right? Most of you? And the side effect of that is that some other guy or gal before you probably did some design but had no idea what they were actually designing for. And then as time has gone on, you've probably had to expand it, you've probably done some updates, maybe some of the network elements have been improved or new versions of software installed. Uh, you might have suddenly decided now we're going to do SIP trunking or we're going to add uh, IP-based other solutions, you've had to grow and expand them. So they tend to be living, breathing things that evolve, they are rarely static. So you can never say, okay, you got my network working, nobody touch it, because something's invariably going to come along that require you to change it. So the real goal of all this is, obviously you want to avoid poor customer uh, experience, uh, whether it's an internal customer, meaning your own employees, or an external one, right, in a contact center situation. And the real, real interesting thing is to be able to find and fix problems before the complaints start rolling in. And, and that's sort of an interesting change of paradigm, right? We usually react to problems by people comp calling to complain. You know, my, I had a terrible phone call. Uh, I had a disconnect in the middle of one of my calls. You know, those kinds of things sort of pop up and you have to deal with those things and it's, you don't want to have to react to those things. You would much rather say, hey, 
there's a problem over here. I would like to resolve it before anybody complains. I'm going to have some metrics that tell me where problems are. And of course, the last thing is you want to stay ahead of the tiger, right? You don't ever want to be that poor guy with a paw on your face. So, how do you solve these problems? And this is one of the areas that is probably one of your biggest challenges. If there is a problem, how do I find it? How do I fix it? And one of the things we found uh, in a recent market research is that when problems occur, more than half of the time is spent trying to find what's the root cause of the problem? Why is this problem happening? And then you have typically you know, less than half of the time to actually resolve the issue. So finding the problem is a significant thing. Uh, and you know, spending time on troubleshooting it uh, and or you know, hopefully identifying these problems before they become serious problems is the, is the key goal. So we recognize, recognized this a number of years ago. Uh, you, you know we make these media gateway session border controllers and other network elements. We more recently added our IP phones to the uh, product portfolio. And last year, hopefully, some of you folks went home with one of our new IP phones. And we recognize that we are in a unique situation. We have a chance where, because we have the endpoints and we have the devices that connect to the outside world, that we have the chance to measure voice quality report voice quality and help IT managers find those problems before they become serious problems and help them isolate them. So we started developing a new software package a few years ago called our Session Experience Manager. The Session Experience Manager is about exactly that, your user's experience and helping identify and managing that. And we're going to spend a few minutes talking about this platform and how it works together with some of our uh, endpoint devices and our uh, gateways and SPCs. So what does it look like? Well, this is a typical, uh, I, I'm guessing, sort of network deployment that um, you folks might run into. Uh, I got some branch offices down here at the bottom, some maybe some remote contact centers. Uh, I've got my data center in the in the core here, which could either be a private cloud or your own data center. Uh, and then uh, at the top here, we've got either a SIP trunk or a legacy TDM trunk connecting to the outside world. What we've done is we put this session experience manager software inside a server in the data center and it has access to the various elements within the network and that's what those dotted lines are. It's communicating with these devices saying, hey, you know, wh what are you hearing, what are you seeing when it comes to voice quality? Tell me about that last call. Uh, what kind of issues are you seeing drop packets? What kind of uh, jitter or latency are you seeing? Reporting all that information back, collecting it, into a database that then can be used as administrator. Then using a web client, you can either locally or remotely access that information and be able to see the network uh, problem, problems or individual user, user experiences. And of course the benefit of this, the biggest benefit is, is that you can identify problems because before they become serious problems and you can work on your time frame, not on whatever you know, the problem sort of rears its ugly head uh, you'd like to be able to identify those situations uh, and be able to do service and maintenance on off time. A key element of, of this we want to point out though is the fact that you know, our gateways and session border controllers uh, play a point of demarcation in the network. You can imagine if you're working with a SIP trunking provider, if there's a voice quality problem and you don't have some way of, of determining is this a problem on my network or is it a problem in their service? If you have no way of telling which side of the issue or where the problem is coming from, it's just going to turn into a finger pointing game. They're going to say, well, you know, our records say everything's fine. Well then, you know, how do you go back to them and say, well, actually, no, I have equipment that's telling me this, this, and this. It's an issue on the wide area network. You need to resolve it. So this point of demarcation is a critical piece. And it's one of those roles that a session border controller has sort of evolved into uh, that has become quite key in, uh, in deploying. So let's take another uh, look at how it actually works. We talked about how these individual elements uh, will be monitoring the voice quality for each call as it goes through. They're actually picking up uh, at the end of each call, packaging up the results of that call, and sending a message back to the session experience manager with that data uh, that includes the quality of experience metrics, which could be the R factor, which is the, the voice quality, jitter, latency reports, packaging up with a call detail record, and shipping it off to the uh, session experience manager. So now, what, uh, what are, now that you've got all this data, what can you do with it? That's the next question. So you've accumulated all this information about all these calls from all these remote elements that are in the network. What can you do with it? 
Well, first of all, um, th there's some views you can do. We'll, we'll show you some screenshots of these individually here. One is you can look at the network from a holistic standpoint, meaning sort of look at the big high-level network and figure out where are there, are there choke points. Is it, is it my wide area network connection to my European branch? Is it uh, something that's just inside my premise or inside my business? What kind of statistics am I seeing? You know, what success rate, fail rate am I having with the call? What kind of voice quality uh, metrics are we getting? Can I look at each individual call? Can I see a record of all the calls that were made? And can I drill down into each call and see what kind of quality? Uh, what are the users experiencing? If I can I pick on a particular user, can I pull up and understand what their situation looks like? Are they seeing mostly successful calls or are there problems there? Uh, also, too, equipments, equipment report alarms. For example, T1 circuits might go out of service uh, outside your business. That creates a red alarm on a, on a gateway that a gateway then would report it. Uh, and then last but not least are some reports they can use for management purposes, those kinds of things. So these are the basic areas that our session experience uh, manager uh, shows the information. So let's take an even closer look. So here's a screenshot from uh, what's called the dashboard. In this particular uh, situation here, we have three network elements that uh, are being displayed. You can see uh, over on the left, we have the individual uh, elements listed. You can see their status, whether it's green, red, or uh, other. You can see what kind of traffic volume they're uh, performing. The, you know, the mean uh, opinion score, the MOS score of the, of the particular platform, what typical jitter and what kind of typical delay and packet loss that particular device is experiencing. You can also see some trends here uh, on the screen, and this gives you some idea, okay, these units are working fine, or is everything okay in that particular segment of the network, or not? Another view is uh, a very high-level sort of network view, and this is um, pretty typical for if you had a large, complex network that we showed earlier. Uh, Top-level view you might use as part of an operations center or in a NOC environment you might put up on a big screen that gives you that holistic view of the network allowing you to drill down on individual elements. And the color of the links in between them can indicate you know, the success or the uh, performance of those uh, legs. So again, if there were a leg that went to your European contact center or a remote office and it were to start to have troubles, it would go from green to red uh, and or you know, some alarms would pop up to show you that there's an issue with that particular leg. Also shows you uh, some alarms here, for example. Uh, from those individual elements in the, uh, in, the, in the map. All right. Another typical sort of uh, report you might look at would be um, maybe some statistics. Now this is over time, and um, it's showing you the performance of these network elements over time. And here's sort of an anecdotal story I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, there's a large school district in, in Allen, Texas. Uh, any of you from Allen, Texas? They have an enormous high school there. It's one of these high schools that uh, is triple the size of anyone that I think I've ever seen before. It you know, has houses within the uh, high school. And it has a, a football stadium that uh, dwarfs a lot of college football stadiums. Well, that school district decided they wanted to deploy uh, an IP-based um, uh, communication system. And as they were starting to work with the system, they started to run into some odd issues. They weren't able to quite put their finger on it. So they deployed our session experience manager and started to do some testing on the network. What they discovered is, is that they had configured the computers that are in the libraries of the school, because there's multiple libraries in such a big school, to do an automatic backup at 2 o'clock p.m. Oops. Right in the middle of the afternoon, when, the when school is actually pretty heavily being used, every computer in the library was doing a backup automatically in the middle of the afternoon, which was flooding the routers and causing all kinds of voice quality problems. Well, the way they found it was from looking at some of the statistics on the network performance. They saw a dip at 2 o'clock, and they scratched their heads and said, what is going on between the library and the core of our network at 2 o'clock in the afternoon? And that's how they found the problem. What they meant to do is configure it for 2 a.m., not 2 p.m., and that fixed the problem. It's just a little tiny little change, right? A.m., p.m.? So those are the kinds of things that have totally, you know, showing you an example of what you can uh, find with some of these statistics. When it actually comes down to an individual call, let's say you had a call, and it's always, let's say, it's the CEO's call, right? The investor CEO call. It has that little, well, there's a little something happened in the call. I'm not sure what it was, but I wasn't happy with it. You need to find out that problem. 
you can actually drill down to an individual call, go right into that call, see each leg that that call jumped across, in this example here from one phone, through the network, through a uh, uh, session border controller, maybe to another caller, uh, and you can look over time how the uh, voice quality performed during, the, the, during that time. So you can actually zero right into the moment in the device that had the voice quality problem. Again, a very powerful tool. So that's um, uh, a quick peek at the Session Experience Manager. Now it depends on the other network elements uh, that we talked about. Um, and now I'm going to move on. I'm going to spend a few minutes to just talk about some updates on our Session Border Controller family. Uh, I know, um, you know it is a pretty technical audience here, so I'm sure you folks are probably pretty familiar, but a Session Border Controller plays an important role between uh, an outside SIP network and the inside SIP network providing security, interoperability, and of course, as you've learned, voice quality measurement, right? Uh, so I thought it would just give you an update on where we are with our, our product portfolio with uh, our SBCs. Well, one of us have what we call a uh, hybrid family of our SBCs, and these are platforms that originally were offered as gateways that we added SBC functionality to them. The beauty of these platforms is you can be used both as a session border controller for SIP trunking and as a gateway for TDM trunking at the exact same time which is great for those folks that are making the move from TDM trunking to SIP trunking. If you have an existing gateway, you can add the licenses and add the software to, uh, to start to support SIP trunks. Or you might be in one of those situations where, well, these TDM trunks, uh, we've got a contract for another year or two until it finishes up, but uh, I know I'm going to move to SIP trunking. So I, I want to be able to invest once and support both kinds of trunks, whether it be TDM or SIP. We have three different models, 800 to 1000, which we have uh, back on our countertop in our 3000, which is the uh, high density model of it. So uh, a, good, a good mix and match in that particular uh, portfolio. It's supporting up to 1,000 sessions. So um, now let's move on and talk about our appliance-based pure SBC. So this has no gateway functionality, just, uh, just for uh, SIP trunking or uh, other SIP applications. Uh, we range all the way from a little, our little 500 platform, which um, can support uh, up to 250 sessions, uh, all the way up to our new immediate 9,000 SBC, which can do up to 16,000 sessions. So a huge span of uh, capabilities in our pure SBC platform. So, all right. And this, um, uh, one of the new things, our, our uh, version 7 software added a number of features to the, the new 9,000 across the family, some interesting functions. All right. Now, last but not least is the pure software. There are those uh, deployments that folks would like to uh, be able to use their own iron. You know, they've got a virtualized environment, maybe got blade servers, got your own data infrastructure, and you'd like to be able to have a session border controller in a pure software environment. Uh, so we do offer it uh, either in a, in a uh, VMware or Hyper-V environment uh, that can be installed on your own iron, uh, or we offer it preloaded on a particular uh, HP server platform that we've uh, uh, arranged through uh, their OEM program, uh, providing, you know, connectivity solutions for, you know, up in the 25, 2,000 or, you know, 16,000 sessions. Uh, so very high scale, very broad portfolio for uh, session board controllers. And of course, they play those three key roles I already mentioned, right? You know, the interoperability, the security, and last but not least is that voice quality management. So with it, I wanted to share with you one other little last thing, and this is, um, we, uh, uh, one of the challenges for some of our partners and some of our customers is, is you know, configuring an SBC is not an easy task. Uh, so we went a little extra mile and we created something called the SBC Wizard. Uh, so I'd like to introduce you to it um, real quick here. So I'm just going to click play here. So let's paint a picture of a standard SBC configuration. You've been tasked to implement a new SBC for the company. So for three days, after going through the complex interoperability documentation, bridging the different SIP flavors on the network, maintaining access lists, managing security concerns, and praying it all works the way you want it to, phew, your configuration is still subject to communication errors, extended technician time, and of course, dollars spent. Introducing Audio Code's SBC Configuration Wizard. Just like a standard desktop UI, our wizard is simple to use, easy to adapt, and takes minutes, not days. The product utilizes pre-made interoperability templates, customized to specific PBX and SIP trunk services. 
the user needs only to input their PBX model, service provider, and provision of few other parameters. After that, it's nothing but great job. You rock! Wow, you're like a wizard. Audio Codes is constantly updating its template portfolio in the cloud, so technicians can have seamless access to updates. The configuration wizard saves time, money, complexity, and stress. Don't let the words lost in SBC configuration be part of your vocabulary. Let Audio Codes SBC Wizard be your beacon of light. So what are you waiting for? All right, so hopefully that give you a little peek at some of the nifty little tools that we've come up with uh, as uh, an enhancement for uh, our SBCs. One of the, what really drove the decision to do that, by the way, was um, as people begin to move in SIP trunking environments, what they do is they run into new service providers and they say, how do I configure or add a new service provider to my offering? Uh, and that's something where, as the video mentioned, we're constantly updating that uh, portfolio of interoperability and you have access to that information instantly uh, through the wizard so that uh, you don't have to you know, dig through reams of paper and documentation to figure out how to do the configuration. It's handled all automatically and it's been a real big popular enhancement. So. With that, any questions about what you learned today about voice quality or network management or session border controllers or what's new from audio codes or or what are we giving away today? Or <laughs> okay, well let's do this. Let's um, bring a, bring up the uh, the business cards. Now, obviously, you got to be present to win. So those of you that are not present are not eligible. Wait, no, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that. yeah, exactly. All right, so let's do a quick shuffle here. Yeah. All right, so we are over at booth 200. When we get done here, if you want to stop by, uh, you can see some of these network elements right, uh, right in our, uh, our booth there. So with that, Varen, you want to cut the deck here? Okay. This is that. All right, top of the deck is... Eduardo from Lindorf. Eduardo? Oh, there he is. He's not present. He's on your team, I don't know. I think we draw the next one here. Sorry about that. It's got to be here. Jonathan. Is that you? All right. Let's give Jonathan a big round of applause. Congratulations. Wow. So thanks again, everyone, for spending some time with me today.